Hello everyone! The Warcraft movie is being released across the world and one of its main characters is Duratan. The story of the movie is not going to be exactly as we know it since they released a new Warcraft novel just to set up this alternate reality or this movie adaptation so the storyline of the movie is not the same as the main universe. This means that we have at least three versions of Duratan to talk about, mainly our reality, Warlords of Draenor's version and the movie version. That means that there's plenty to talk about, so let's dive right into it, starting with the main universe, starting with our Duratan. Let's begin, shall we? Duratan's story begins during a Korsh Ark festival, a festival which took place two times a year during spring and autumn, in which all the different Orcus clans would come together to honor that time when day and night were at the same length. The rest of the year, the clans would pretty much stick to themselves, but the Orcus elders they realized that some sort of union and communication between the clans was of vital importance, so they honored the tradition as they celebrated in the shadow of Oshugan, the mountain of spirits as they called it. Young Duratan of the Frostwolf clan at this time was too young to join the nighttime celebration, since he was one year off from participating in the Um Rigor, the rite of adulthood. In the darkness, he listened to the rhythm of the drums, a burning curiosity as to what exactly was going on. Surely the adults were having secret conversations and great fun as the children were supposed to sleep. He could stand it no longer and decided to sneak out of his tent and find out exactly what the adults were up to, but he wasn't the only one who couldn't sleep that night. Young Orgrim Doomhammer of the Blackrock clan had also moved out to investigate and the two children bumped into each other. Surprised, they whispered, what are you doing here? And they quickly decided that if they were going to do this, they might as well team up. Through the darkness, they sneaked to a tree near the tents. Orgrim told Duratan who he was, and Duratan was impressed. The Doomhammer line was not one of chieftains, but it was well known and honored. And of course, Orgrim appreciated Duratan's position of being heir to the title of chieftain of the Frostwolf clan. Once they finally reached the adults, they listened in on their conversations, and they were surprisingly dull. There were talks about fevers and cooking recipes. It was not what the young orcs had expected, but it is what the adults were talking about. For two more days, the festival went on, and during these days and nights, these two would sneak out together and challenge each other to different contests. They did racing, climbing, there was a test of strength, sure-footedness, everything that they could think of, and each defeated the other, almost as if they had planned on taking turns. On the last day of the festival, Orgrim loudly called out for a final challenge to break their stalemate, and Duratan had a special one in mind. Although some of the clans were on friendly terms with each other, a real friendship across clans was something unheard of. But Duratan didn't care and he challenged Orgrim to do something truly different in the history of their people. He wanted them to become friends. Orgrim thought that Duratan had gone mad. It was unheard of. He might as well propose a friendship between the Great Black Wolf and the Mild Talbuck. Duratan was disappointed, called Orgrim a coward, which was just a ticket to have him scream that he was no coward and would back down from no challenge. The two young orcs ended up in a brawl, but in the end, as the shamans were healing their wounds, Orgrim and Duratan, they looked at each other with smiles on their faces. A unique friendship was born of two orcs from different clans, a challenge which Duratan believed would end only when one of them was dead. The elders when they found out about their friendship, they thought that the novelty of it would soon fade and each youth would return to the rightful place and keep the familiar order that had been established. But the elders would be disappointed. Their friendship carried on, pushing each other to become better than the other with contests and challenges. And one day, they were having a running contest within Terokar Forest. Orgrim Doomhammer won the match, but a terrible and powerful beast stumbled through the woods. An ogre spotted the orcs, and despite their legs feeling on fire, the two orcs ran for their lives. To die a glorious death in battle was one thing, but they were so overpowered by the hideous creature that their deaths would be humorous rather than honorable. Luckily for these two, they were spotted by Draenei, who came to the rescue and quickly brought the ogre down. After introductions and asking what the orcs were doing here, Restalan, leader of the guards of Telmor, offered them hospitality within his city. It was already too dark to go home to the clans, and there were more dangerous creatures living within the forest, so the orcs accepted the invite as runners presented the clans to inform them about what had happened. The Draenei are not native to the planet of Draenor. They came from a whole different planet while being on the run from the Burning Legion. Their former leaders, Kil'jaeden and Archimonde, they'd accepted a deal offered by Sargeras 
which brought them great power, but it also twisted them into something dark and hideous. Their third leader at the time, Velen the Prophet, he could see that joining Sargeras was a very bad idea. With the help of the holy beings called the Naru, he and those able to left the corrupted people behind, which pissed off Kiel Jaden. He saw it as a personal insult, a betrayal by his longtime friend and co leader, and he would spend the next thousands of years searching for them to get his sweet revenge. Each time that the Legion found the Draenei, they were able to escape to another planet, but the Naru, who'd been able to save them time and time again, it was now dying and they were stuck on this planet. Orgrim and Duratan, they were led to the city by Restalan, but when they arrived, they couldn't see any buildings or any roads. The area seemed to be just another part of the forest until Restalan kneeled down and he picked up a beautiful green crystal. With a single incantation, the magic of the crystal revealed the city of the Drenna before them, which, as you might imagine, was a sight to behold for the orcs. Although Orc and Draenei shared the same planet, they didn't interact much. Sometimes they would trade goods with each other, but most of the time they left each other in peace. It was a rare occasion indeed to have these two orcs visiting them, and Prophet Velen himself agreed to meet them for dinner. While eating delicious food, they talked about where they were from, what clans they belonged to, and the Doomhammer prophecy. Duratan noticed how Velen seemed to be sincerely interested in them, yet he also wondered why it was he who was experienced this moment, and not someone like Mother Kesher, the respected elder shaman of the Frostwolf clan. Mother Kesher would surely have appreciated this moment so much more than he and Orgrim could, but regardless, the orcs and Velen, they shared a meal and they went to bed. In the meantime, Mother Kesher received a visit from the spirits, Grandfather Talkra, who told her to bring Duratan to their sacred mountain called Oshagon, which in truth was the ship that the Draenei used to come to the planet, they crashed upon it, and it housed a Naru spirit inside. Grandfather wanted to look upon Duratan himself. He sensed that there was something about Duratan. But when Kesher brought him to the mountain on his initiation day, after Duratan had gone through the ritual of his first solo kill, it turned out that Talkra had been wrong. Duratan was unable to see the ancestors, which meant that the path of shamanism was not meant for him. But the old spirit did sense something special about the future chieftain. He told Kesher to teach him well, for one thing was certain, from Duratan's line, would come salvation. But in order to even have a line to begin with, Duratan would have to find a mate. At the Autumn's Kush Arak festival celebration, Duratan noticed a female orc which seemed to resemble the epitome of all the orcs valued. He asked Orgrim who she was. Surely she couldn't have been from his clan, from the Frostwolf clan. Otherwise he would have noticed her already. But Orgrim laughed and slapped him on his back. You unobservant dog. She is a Frostwolf. How could Duratan? not have noticed her, but then he realized who she was. This was Draka, born sickly and pale, now a warrior maid. Duratan dreamed of her that night, and when he awoke, he knew that she would be his. He was heir to the chieftaincy of one of the proudest of the Orcish clans. What female could possibly deny him? Well, apparently Draka was one of those orcs. When Duratan first came to her with the offer to go on a hunt together, and this is a courtship ritual amongst the orcs, she refused with the excuse that she wasn't of age yet. Duratan wouldn't be pushed away so easy, so if she refused to go as a courtship ritual, he instead asked her to join him on this hunt for simply being company. Two proud warriors and nothing more. To this offer, Draka grinned and she agreed to join him on this hunt and it was a great success. These two orcs complimented each other. Duratan had the sharp eyes, but she, she looked more deeply at what he found. Together, they tracked down a wounded Clefhoof until a great black wolf stood crouched over the same animal that they had been tracking. It snarled at them. Duratan charged before the beast even had time to gather himself. The axe felt as nothing in his arms as he lifted and struck. It sank deep into the creature's torso, but Duratan felt retaliation from the yellow teeth crunching down on his arm. It was harder to lift the axe a second time around with blood pumping out of his body, but he did and Draka's war cry soon joined him as she speared the beast midsection. A third strike with the axe came from Duratan and together these two had been able to bring down a beast that usually required several seasoned orcs to bring it down. They would never be able to figure out who it was that had struck the killing blow. And truth be told, Duratan was very happy about that. After Draka healed his wounds, she told him something that made her smile. When she had rejected his invite, she had not been of age yet, this has been true, but today was the day that she would be old enough. 
She had rejected it as a courtship ritual, but the hunt had brought these two orcs together. She was now of age, and Draka had looked favor upon Durtan, just as he had prayed for to the ancestors. They kissed, and they let their nature take over. But unknown to them, from a distance, one of Kil'jaeden's servants was observing them. Their bestial nature offended him, but he was on a mission to collect as much information as possible. Each time that they had found the Draenei in the past, the Draenei had been able to escape before the might of the Legion could crush them, so this time Kil'jaeden decided to go with a different plan. He wanted to observe how the Draenei lived, how the orcs lived, what was going on on the planets, and how they could turn it to their advantage. When his servant informed him about the race of orcs living on the planet, Kil'jaeden was intrigued and he knew that he had found his perfect victims. Instead of directly sending the legion and see the Draenei make their escape again, he would turn the orcs against them and use them to do his dirty work. Another Kosh Ark had come and gone, and in that time, Mother Kesher had passed on into the afterlife. Durtan's father Garad had fallen in battle against the Ogres and Gron, so Durtan now held the position of war chief, and by the next Kosh Ark, a ceremony would be held and Draka would be his mate. Orgrin's father had also passed on, so now it was he who held on to the mighty weapon called Doomhammer and the title of being second in command to his war chief named Blackhand. There was a certain balance of life and death, sorrow and joy, the orcs were living the good life, but soon all of that would change. Using the orcish shaman Ner'zhul, Kil Jaden pretended to be his deceased mate and he gave Ner'zhul a warning. The Draenei were evil, he had to gather the clans and bring the orcs together to fight against them, to preserve their way of life. The clans were summoned, and although some were pissed about being called to heal at Ner'zhul's feet like they were some sort of dog, they did listen to his words, the words of the ancestors. Drekvar, now the elder shaman of the Frostwolf clan, he verified to Durotan that what Ner'zhul told them about the Draenei was the truth. Mother Kesher herself had told them. In his heart and mind, Durotan was conflicted. These Draenei had never seemed to be the enemy, even saved his and Orgrim's life, and yet the ancestors, they had had come to give them this warning. The ancestors had said no such thing of course, this was all Kil Jaden's manipulations, but for the moment Nerzul asked nothing more of them than to train, watch and prepare. Thinking back at his meeting with Velen, doubt began to eat away at his memories. Had Velen truly been just kind to them, or had he tried to find out about the orcs as much as he could? What an opportunity to have two young orcs to tell them everything they wanted to know, everything they needed for their plots and schemes. How easily the mind can be turned to hate from a place of fear. And Duratan agreed that the Frostwolves, they would prepare for war. For the good of the clan and the good of the orcs. The first attacks upon the Draenei. They were easy, since they didn't expect the orcs to turn on them. Prophet Velen was informed about the lives lost, and he wanted to know what was going on. A message was sent to Ner'zhul, asking why the orcs were out for blood, and Velen invited Ner'zhul to join him to their sacred mountain, a pilgrimage to a place both races held sacred, to ask for wisdom of beings much wiser than they, as to how they could heal this rift between them. Kiel Jaden and Ner'zhul's apprentice Gul'dan, they were there as they received this message, and both of them were quick to suggest to simply kill the prophet, but Ner'zhul wasn't so eager. They were not grun, they were not going to kill unarmed foes, so instead Gul'dan suggested to use Duratan and the Frostwolf clan to instead capture Velen. This way they would kill two birds with one stone, they could have Duratan prove his loyalty to their cause, and they could take the Draenei leader captive. Duratan had promised to obey, so he followed orders and he prepared his clan to capture Velen. In the distance, they could see the prophet and his people arrive, unarmed and with a serene look on their faces. In their conversation, Velen explained exactly why he wanted to go to the mountain of Oshugan. Although both races held the place sacred, the Draenei knew that deep inside, a being that had long cared for the Draenei people lived. It was older by far than anything either of their minds could grasp, more powerful but even old and powerful things can die, and it was dying now. There was still wisdom and grace and reconciliation that they could have from it. Valen's people and the orcs. Blasphemer, Drekvar cried out as he listened to the prophet's words. You have to understand that Oshugan was sacred to the orcs and the shamans. It was the home of their beloved dead, and Drekvar would sooner die before letting the Draenei take even one step into that place. Velen was surprised at the outburst, and he tried to explain 
that the spirits inside those walls, they were truly there and he would never say that that was not the case. Yet they were drawn there because of this being that he spoke of. And that was exactly the wrong thing to say. Drekvar bellowed in outrage and the other orcs cried out. Velen had just suggested that the spirit of their ancestors were drawn to Oshagon like moss to the flame. The ancestors were sacred and the orcs were pissed. But Duratan, he smacked Drekvar across the face and told him to protect Velen and the Draenei. The shaman reluctantly called upon the element of fire to encircle the Draenei to keep them safe and Duratan had his prisoners, just as he was ordered to do. That night, the chieftain of the Frostwolf clan decided to go and talk with Velen. He asked him why the Draenei were trying to destroy the orcs, what had they ever done to him? And Velen simply returned the question. Why did the orcs attack the Draenei? They had never lifted a finger to harm them and now over two dozen Draenei's were dead. The truth of the comments made Duratan even angrier. The ancestors do not lie to us, he snarled. We have been warned that you are not what you seem, that you are our enemies. Velen tried to explain once more that they meant no harm to the orcs, that the being inside Oshikon could help both of them, but his words fell on deaf ears. In truth, he was asking Duratan to choose between people that he trusted, traditions that he'd been raised on, and the word of the prophet. He would choose his people, and if they would meet on the battlefield, Duratan would not hold back. Velen was confused. Wasn't Duratan planning to bring it to Ner'zhul? But the chieftain had no intention of doing that. Had Velen come armed and had he been captured in battle, that would have been a different situation. But there's no honor in binding a foe who extends his hands willingly. He was ordered to meet and listen to Velen's words and that is exactly as he had done. We are in an impasse, you and I. Duratan said, You insist that you have no ill will towards the orcs. My leader said the ghost of my ancestors tell me otherwise. Again, Duratan knelt before the Draenei. They call you prophets. Do you know the future then? If so, then tell me what you and I can do to avert what I fear will unfold. I will not shed innocent life, Velen. Give me something, anything I can take to Ner'zhul that will prove that what you say is true. He realized he was pleading and he didn't care. If pleading to the prophet would save his beloved people, his clan, the orcs, then pleading is what he would do. But Velen had no clear answers for him. Duratan let the prophet go, both knowing that the path ahead of them was a dark one. From that moment on, things would move quickly and Duratan found himself in a position where he knew that the path the orcs were taking was not the right one. But speaking out at this point would mean almost certain exile and death for his people. So he found himself in a position where he was forced to go along. Nerzu, he had realized that he'd been tricked by Kill Jaden since the fury of this so-called glorious being after being informed that Duratan had let Velen go, it made him see that he feared this so-called Great One. One trip to Oshigan to communicate with the ancestors, it showed him all the truth that he had to know. What a fool he had been to be deceived like that. When he rode back home, in his mind he tried to make plans to prevent his people from being used even further. But his apprentice Gul'dan had seen what went down and he formed Kill Jaden. Gul'dan had no problem with selling his people in exchange for more power. With him, there was no need for deception or games, and he stepped up to take over from Ner'zhul. When the elements no longer responded to the orcs their call, since the elements did not support the war of the Draenei, Gul'dan offered them a solution in the form of demonic powers granted by Kil'jaeden. Captured Draenei were tortured and slain in a demonstration of power, and despite what his eyes told him, Duratan went along and he allowed his powerless shamans to embrace these dark powers. When Blackhand was made war chief, and when the order came to drain the life out of their children to produce more soldiers for the hordes, Duratan went along with it. When he was ordered to reveal the city of Telmor, because he remembered how Restalan had done that with the incantation, he went along with it. The chieftain of the Frostwolf clan had to witness how the world was turned upside down, how the Orcish clans went from rituals, honoring the ancestors, honoring the hunt, to a war machine hell-bent on eradicating the Draenei. Even the ogres, long-time enemies of the orcs, were embraced as allies for this goal, and Draenei men, women and children were slaughtered. Their technology and weaponry adapted as best as they could, and all of it, Telmor, Karabor, victory after victory, until only the capital city of Shefrev was left standing. Before the orcs would march into this final battle, Kil Jaden arranged a little gift for them. The pit lord Manoroth was sent down to Gul'dan to provide his blood, blood which would grant the orcs incredible power, but also 
enslave them. Nerzu witnessed Gul'dan making this dark bargain. And he knew that he had to do something. Warn someone to not accept this so-called gift. A note was sent to Duratan, who had been going along with the Horde, he didn't want his people to die or be exiled, yet he was one of the more vocal opponents to Gul'dan and Blackhand's changes. He read the note, he read the warning, and when most of the orcs gulped down the demon juice, he forbade his Frostwolf clan from joining. His longtime friend Orkham Doomhammer also didn't accept his gift. He saw that this was something to stay away from. There were a few others who had this wisdom as well, but most of the orcs had demon blood pumping in their veins as they charged the city and brought it down. Kill Jaden and Manoroth, they looked upon the slaughter and the deceiver figured to himself that there was no way Velen could have escaped. He believed that his long time quest of getting revenge was finally complete, so he left the orcs to their fate. Unknown to them was that Velen and a few of the Draenei that had evacuated the city were leaving enough of the people behind to make it seem like all the Draenei were exterminated. Velen shed a tear over all the lives lost, all the people sent to their doom, but the Naru assured him that his survival was key. He was needed for a greater plan, so Velen grieved as the city of Shafrev was lost, just like the orcs. With Kil'jaeden gone, the promised power never delivered to Gul'dan, the demon blood still driving them insane, yet nobody left to kill. The orcs turned on one another, voices rose up against Gul'dan, and the use of fell magic, it had corrupted both the planet and the orcs. Where once the land had been green and plenty of wildlife to hunt, now the land was a dry brown. Where once the orcs had a brown skin, now their color was green, the orcs were in trouble, their world was dying, and so were their people. Luckily for Gul'dan, someone in need of the Horde, the corrupted guardian Medivh, made contact and showed Gul'dan a world full of food, water, and plenty of enemies to kill. The Dark Portal would connect Azeroth with Draenor and the Orcs would have a world to conquer, an enemy to focus their attention on rather than Gul'dan. The Horde was summoned once the portal was built and with the sacrifice of a captured Draenei child, Gul'dan activated the gateway. Duratan screamed out in protest, Gul'dan, what have you done to us? As he saw how the child was sacrificed. No good could come out of this for their people if this is what it took to power the portal. And as he spoke out, the orcs started to fight amongst each other. The Frostwolf clan quickly rose up to defend the chieftain. Even some orcs from other clans agreed with Duratan, but when the portal manifested, all fell silent. A scouting party was sent to check out what was on the other side. They returned with unfamiliar beasts, but beasts nonetheless that would feed the orcs. Gul'dan had showed them a way to a new world, a world to conquer, but a world that would allow them to survive. Duratan loved his clan, loved his people, he wanted them to survive, and he, like all orcs even before this moment, reveled in the kill. Perhaps it would all be well, axe in hand, hope flourishing in his heart, Duratan joined in the race toward the portal, toward this place called Azeroth. He lifted his arms and raised a cry that was on the lip of every orc as they surged forwards. And so began the first war between orcs, humans, for dominance over the world of Azeroth. Now there's a little bit of a gap between the moment that the Frostwolf clan stepped through the Dark Portal and the moment that we hear about their story again, where they're exiled out of the Horde. We know that Draka was pregnant before she stepped through the portal because she told Great Mother Gaia, Duratan's mother, the name that they had planned for their unborn child. We also know that Duratan was a vocal opponent to Gul'dan and the path that the Horde was on. He shouted his protest when Gul'dan sacrificed sacrificed a young Draenei child to open the Dark Portal, and later on he discovered more about this warlock's plans. He found out that Gul'dan did not have the best intentions for the people in mind. All he thought about was gaining more power, and he was willing to sacrifice it all, including their own people. The chieftain of the Frostwolf clan knew that they had to tell someone. With the birth of his son, he realized that they deserve more, that his people deserve better than someone like Gul'dan. He planned to tell his longtime friend Doomhammer, and he wanted Draka to stay behind and take care of the child. But she was Draka, and no one would forbid her to follow her mates, not even Duratan himself. She was fierce. She was his heart, like he was hers. And together, they met with Orgrim Doomhammer, and they told him everything they knew. Orgrim promised them that when the time was right, they would stand side by side, as they would slay the great betrayer Gul'dan together. That moment would never come, since Gul'dan's assassins were waiting for Duratan and Draka. They had come silently, 
with none of the pride in the hunt that was so integral to orcish honor. These were assassins, the lowest of the low, the worm beneath the foot. Except these worms were everywhere, and though their mouths remained closed in that unnatural silence, their weapons spoke with a purposeful tongue. An axe bit deep into Duritan's left thigh and he fell. Warm blood flowed down his leg as he twisted and reached with his bare hands, trying desperately to throttle his would-be murderer. He stared up into a face frighteningly devoid of good honest orc rage, indeed of any emotion at all. His adversary lifted the axe again, with every ounce of strength left to him. Duritan's hands closed on the orc's throat. Now the worm did show emotion as he dropped the axe, trying to pry Duritan's thick, powerful fingers from his neck. He turned to defend his mates, but he was too late. Duritan cried aloud in fury and raw grief as he saw Draka's still body hacked almost to pieces, lying on the forest floor in a whitening pool of blood. Her killer loomed over her and now turned his attention to Duratan. In a fair battle, Duratan would have been a match for any three of them. Grievously wounded as he was, with no weapon save his hands, he knew he was about to die. Take the child, he rasped, amazed that he could even speak. The assassin bent close so that Duratan could see him. He spat in Duratan's eye. For a moment, Duratan feared he would impale the baby right in front of his father's eyes. We will leave the child for the forest creatures, snarled the assassin. Perhaps you can watch as they tear him to bits. And then they were gone, as silently as they had left. Draka, my beloved, my little son, I am so sorry. I have brought us to this. The edges of his vision began to turn grey. The image of the child began to fade. The only comfort that Duratan, chieftain of the Frostwolf clan, had, as his life slowly ebbed from him, was the knowledge that he would die before having to witness the horrible spectacle of his son being eaten alive by ravenous forest beasts. And so ends the story of Duratan in the main universe, but his legacy would live on. Their actions pushed Doomhammer into taking action. He took control of the Horde and he tried to lead it down a more honorable path, while young baby Goel would be found by Blackmore and be raised as a slave, as a thrall. As we all know, as even the spirits knew when Duratan was brought to Oshagon, from their line would come salvation, as Thrall would not only set himself free, he would also liberate his people and reform the Horde. For the Horde. This is where I'll end the video for today, and next week we'll talk about what happened to Duratan's alternate version that we saw during Wars of the Denor, because during that expansion we got a bit of new information with the lore changes between realities, and we got some new information that also applies to the main universe Duratan. The Orcus origin story is one with a lot of details, but I do hope that I was able to tell you enough. Duratan always tried to do what was best for his clan and for his people, but he found himself on a crossroads between believing in the ancestors in their way of life or believing someone like Velen. He knew deep down in his heart that where Gul'dan and Blackhand were taking the orcs was not how it was supposed to be, but speaking out would have had dire consequences for him, for his people and for his clan. That is, we'll wrap it up for today. As always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one and until next time guys, see ya!